Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Adrian Finnegan. It's now more than a year since the uprising in Syria began and the violence continues. On Saturday, two explosions in the capital Damascus killed at least 27 people and injured nearly 100 others, leading to fears that groups are trying to take advantage of a growing power vacuum in the country. And with thousands fleeing from the violence every day, neighbouring Turkey also appears to have growing security concerns. They were once the most trusted of allies. But as the year-long crackdown intensifies, Turkey's relations with Syria have soured. And with up to 1,000 refugees streaming across the border daily, Turkey has now been forced to rethink its policy towards its former friend. Citing serious security risks, the Turkish government urged all its nationals to leave Syria and for the first time raised publicly the idea of setting up a buffer zone across the border. All of the options are being studied, including a buffer zone and a security zone. All of these options are included in this study because it would be wrong to liaise on this subject from one point. We are discussing it by evaluating various alternatives. Meanwhile, the UN and Arab League envoy to Syria, Kofi Annan, told the Security Council to end divisions over Syria and act with what he called one voice. But he also stressed the importance of handling the situation carefully. It's a conflict um, in, in, in a region of the world that has um, seen many, many traumatic events. I think we need to handle the situation in Syria very, very carefully. Yes, we tend to focus on Syria, but any miscalculation that leads to major escalation will have impact in the region, which uh, will be extremely difficult to manage. A warning that won't fall on deaf ears in Ankara, as Syria first becomes a crucial test for Turkey in the region. Though a buffer zone would protect civilians, the Turkish government is all too aware it's a move likely to lead to confrontation with the Syrian army, further destabilizing an already fragile region. And wary of any kind of military intervention, talk of a buffer zone across the border is for now likely to remain just that, talk. Well, for more on this, we're joined by our guests today from Ankara, Haldun Solmazturk, a retired brigadier general in the Turkish army. From Toronto, we're joined by Kamran Bokhari, a geopolitical strategist and vice president for Middle East and South Asian affairs at the intelligence think tank Stratfor. And joining us via broadband from Leicester in the UK, Hala Diab, uh, the Syrian writer and broadcaster. Hala Diab is also a member of ODFS, the Organization for Democracy and Freedom in Syria. Welcome uh, all of you to the program. Haldun Solmaz Turk, uh, we'll start with you. Is Turkey serious uh, when it talks of the possibility of setting up a, a buffer zone uh, to the south of its border? Uh, honestly, I, I don't know. But uh, regarding the statement by the Turkish Prime Minister, if I were him, I would avoid such an ambiguous language because the situation is so difficult, so explosive, and uh, Turkey just found itself in. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, Turkey has almost no control over, over the developments. I mean, he's talking about a safe zone, a security zone, or a buffer zone, but the critical thing is if a zone will be established across the border inside Syria, inside sovereign Syrian territory, if this is the case, and if he is serious, uh, this, this will inevitably lead to an escalation. But I doubt if he really meant that for two reasons. First of all, the Turkish public opinion is firmly against any such an intervention, either by Turkey alone, certainly, or an international coalition, including Turkey. Uh, as a matter of fact, without Turkish active participation, I don't see any chance for any intervention in, that, in, in this situation. And secondly, there is a legitimacy problem uh, for, 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 for any intervention, and uh, currently, 
there is no solution uh, or the horizon to, to address this, this, this problem, I'm okay. afraid. Uh, Cameron uh, Bokhari, what do you make of it? Is it, is it dangerous, loose talk by, uh, by Ankara? Is it likely ever to come to fruition, do you think? I think the Turkish government finds itself in a very, very difficult situation. On one hand, uh, it, as my Turkish colleague is saying, is looking at a very explosive, very dangerous situation and tampering with it in, in, a, in a way that's not conducive to Turkish national security interests could be really detrimental. So he has one situation uh, that he has to deal with. On the other hand, he just can't sit by and do nothing. And so, the, and there are two reasons for that. The first reason is that there is growing uh, domestic and international pressure on the prime minister and his government to do something about what's going on in Syria. And the second thing is that, you know, regardless of who's in power, whether it's this prime minister, uh, Mr. Erdogan, or someone else, Turkey cannot just wait for things to happen, because what if the government or you know the state were to start to weaken uh, and then what what if the, you know chaos increases in the country and it begins to have an impact on the border with turkey uh, then you have to be prepared for that in other words what i'm trying to say here is that no one i don't think that the prime minister is trying to go into the country or coming up with some loose talk if you will he's trying to manage a very difficult situation both from a perception public relations level and actually a ground reality level as well and he wants to be prepared for any eventuality and you know when you don't have a good strategy you really have to be uh, you know uh, you, ne you ne at least need to let uh, those who are looking at you know that you are doing something about okay. the situation All even right. though you're not really able to do it all right, uh, Hala dear, but I, I, you're not at all impressed with this this talk of a of a buffer zone, are you? Why not? Uh, but first, we need to define what what it means buffer zone because uh, there is a zone which is like uh, defined by the border um, uh, refugees camp in the in the territory uh, of Turkey, and that this new buffer zone is about is is not about actually uh, helping the refugees as much is to extend this zone into the territory of Syria. So by this act, the. the the, uh, tr the Turkish government is uh, trying to reduce the conflict spreading into the territory of Turkey, and at the same time, it uh, tries to add an international dimension to the crisis of Syria, or what Syria is uh, struggling to convince the world in support, with support of Russia and China is a domestic and internal um, uh, affair. And, and the question is why Turkey is now carrying the torch of helping the Syrian people and and, and, and the torch of freedom to help Syrian people. Are Syrians incapable of really getting their freedom uh, uh, through the, the revolution and the uprising? Why it's now Turkey after it's, it's like, you know, it, there is historical heritage between Syria and Turkey. We as Syrians have been occupied by the Turks for 400 years, like two centuries in, in Syria, which actually uh, this Turkish occupation it did what it what was the, the, the current situation we struggle from in the Middle East. It, okay. it contributed to the lack of modernity we struggled from. And I don't see a legitimacy in the Turkish government in order to say they want to support the, the, the Syrians to, to gain their freedom. OK, you, you, you raise a, lo a lot of issues to, to, for us to discuss uh, uh, there. I just want to get something clear uh, here, uh, Hala. It, it's not the idea of a buffer zone itself that you're opposed to. It's uh, it, it's the prospect of it being policed by Turkey, is that right? Yes, because when you, like in the situation of Libya, for example, the international support of Libya to get its freedom is different because the, the, like the, the United Nations, if, if, if United Kingdom or America said, yes, we want to support the Syrians, 
UK has established the symbol of a freedom and the democratic uh, uh, civil society. Why, why the Tur why, why Turkey is is not a legitimate actually government in order to speak on the behalf of the Syrians? The Turks from the first uh, of this when the opposition started, Erdogan was supporting Assad, and and then and he also calls for ref for reform. And then we had seen a different reaction from the Turkish government where they called the opposition SNC into. Turkey and they uh, they uh, supported them and they made them the formal face of the Syrian opposition without actually this opposition being elected and selected by the Syrian youth inside Syria who are the real heroes of the Syrian uh, Syrian revolution and and that's why we need to question whether Turkey is doing what it's doing and is calling for buffer zone to protect its borders, to pro to drag uh, Syria into uh, military intervention, into NATO military intervention, or is it really genuine in in, in its uh, help for the Syrian people? Hold on, uh, What do you make of of what you've just heard there, and how would Turkey? Uh, respond perhaps uh, to a, a UN-sponsored buffer zone on, on its southern border, policed not by uh, Turkish troops but uh, by UN peacekeepers? Oh, yes, uh, I, 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 I'm a bit surprised. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an historical fact that uh, not only Syria but many other countries in the region, not only in the Middle East but in the Caucasus and in the Balkans and, and in some, some other parts in, in Northern Africa, Many countries have been part of the Ottoman Empire until less than 100 years ago, but this is history. We are looking at now at a current crisis just at the border of Turkey, directly having a direct impact on, on, on Turkish security. And I don't, I, I don't think it's, it's about who, who would intervene. A again, uh, I'm repeating myself, it's about the legitimacy First of all, again, without Turkish participation and active support, even a UN Security Council resolution is, is provided. Uh, no intervention you know, has, would have any, any success at, at, at all. Yes, I mean, if there is a UN Security Council resolution authorizing the establishment of a buffer zone, it's my understanding that, and it's my feeling that Turkish government uh, would welcome that and would not hesitate to, to go along uh, inside a, a coalition into, uh, into Syria. Okay, I, I, I'll get a, I want to get a response from Kamran in, in just a moment, but, for, but first, Hale, you're, you're, you're shaking your head there, you're disagreeing. Yeah, there are two points. First, he said it's history, and we are not talking now about the current situation. Now, the current situation in Syria is co caused because of the historical uh, background of Syria. We have been used, uh, or like we, we get used to be uh, suppressed. Uh, and that's what uh, the Ottoman occupation has done to the Syria. And then, you know, we, 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 that's why people uh, accept the brutality uh, of, of the Syrian regime and of Assad, because the ethics of democracy and liberal society and civil society have never been introduced to the Syrian people, have never been introduced to the Arabs, because we are a product of, of colonization. We as Arabs are a product of the Ottoman occupation, who has occupied us for years. And that's why we can't deny history impact on the current situation of the Middle East. This is number one. Number two, the, the many factors which contribute to the complicated relationship between Turkey and Syria. Uh, uh, Turkey has has threatened to invade Syria uh, several years ago with the, with the case of Abdullah Ocalan, when uh, the Turks really threatened if he has not been uh, handed over to, to the Turks, uh, uh, the Turks will uh, invade Syria. And then, uh, you know, uh, the, this has been sorted by Adana agreement. So there was always this kind of attempt of the Turkish government to deploy its military intervention on Syria. Okay. And that's why we are not actually confident what is the agenda? How genuine is the Turkish uh, decision for this buffer zone? OK, I, I know Haldan wants to, wants to come back on, on that. We'll, we'll give him the, the opportunity to do so in a moment. But first, uh, Cameron Bokhari, I, I, I want to ask you what the uprising has done in Syria to help or, or hinder Turkey's re-emergence as, uh, as a major regional power, given that both 
uh, uh, Syria and uh, Damascus, uh, uh, Damascus rather, and Ankara were, were strong allies uh, just until very recently. To what extent has uh, Turkey been biding its time uh, as far as its response to the, the, the Syrian uprising, waiting to see what or who materializes? The resurgence of any country, uh, and in this case Turkey as a major regional player, uh, takes place in stages. We have to keep in mind that the Turkish Republic is nearly 100 years old, and for, a hun for the bulk of that century, Turkey has not been a, a major player uh, in the sense that uh, the Ottoman Empire was. And if Turkey is to resurge a as a regional power, it's going to take time. And it's regardless of what's happening in Syria or Iraq, definitely because of the borders, geography matters, uh, it does hinder and, and shape the way in which Turkey will reemerge. But I also want to take an opportunity to address a few points that were made earlier. First of all, there is a huge difference between what we one wants and what one can have. The reality is that, yes, there is a colonial legacy, there is history. And you know, if we were to take that as an issue, then you know, one country or another has been occupied you know, by a third, and this is reality all across the world. And, and so that, that's something that we cannot escape. Uh, and the fact of today is that there is geography. I mean, Turkey cannot just be oblivious to what's happening in Syria. It has to have a role. Now, obviously, states behave based on their interests. So if someone is going to promote democracy, if a country is saying that it's going to promote democracy, uh, they may be very well genuine in that, but it's guided by their interests. And it's mostly national security, especially when you have the kind of commotion that we're seeing in, in Syria. And therefore, the Turks have no choice but to deal with this situation, whether they like it or not. And I don't think that this government or any government in Turkey faced with the same situation would be desiring to go into, to, uh, into Syria and, 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 and create more problems for itself. It's about managing a very, very difficult situation. Hala Diab, it's, it's about managing a, a difficult situation. Surely uh, Turkey has an, an obligation to protect uh, those people who are fleeing across it, it, its border from, from Syria, the refugees. It's, it's actually it's not about managing uh, the, the situation rather than escalating the situation you, like we know it's it, this intervention or this buffer zone can be the trigger her of possibility of aggression between the the, the turkish armies and the, the, between the syrian armies between because the syrian armies will uh, secure their borders will go into a fight with uh, the, the the turkish armies if that happens and being a member of the NATO, the NATO will, by definition, will be obliged to come to aid a member of its states, and that will lead to the intervention also of the NATO into the situation, and this will escalate the situation. There is another point I want to make. What is now our priority? Is it our priority to increase the number of the Syrian refugees who are fleeing from Aleppo and Dar'a and Idlib, or to solve the problems of the Syrian refugees? If we support or if we protect uh, or we say, okay, we are, our priority now is just to protect the refugees, that will encourage people to leave their homes. And we will end up with a national crisis, a humanitarian crisis. We will end up with Syrian refugees and the situation with Palestinian refugees and Kurds refugees. I think the priority now is not to escalate the problem we have in Syria, rather than to find ways to solve the problems and to solve the, 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 the crisis of Syria without, without actually increase the arms or increase the military conflict. Halden uh, Solmestog, I mean, uh, to that end, that, I mean, that's what Kofi Annan uh, meant uh, when he talked about uh, the need to handle the, the Syria issue uh, carefully, wasn't it? Oh, uh, absolutely. I absolutely agree, agree with him. Uh, in 1998, it was a crisis between Turkey and Syria. And indeed, Turkey threatened military action because Syria clearly, openly, you know, harbored the terrorist chief inside the country and, and supported a terrorist campaign inside Turkey. But that was 14 years ago. Today, this crisis is not between Turkey and Syria. This is a region-wide crisis with global scale 
complications. I mean, it's, it's easy to blame colonialists for, for any problems and ills, uh, not only in Syria, but, but in, in many other countries. But this does not help in solving this problem today. There is, the, the problem today is that there is an internal conflict in Syria. And as it is perceived from outside, the Syrian government is massacring his, its, its, its own people. And all these people you know, fleeing from this massacre are flocking into Turkey, you know, crossing the border into, into, into Turkey. And uh, neither the Turkey nor the international community okay. turn a blind eye and right. uh, just, just deaf ear to, 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 to what's going on. Uh, if the UN Security Council, Council you know, manages to arrive at, at a resolution, I don't think Turkey hesitate at all or refrain okay. from you know, playing, playing okay. its role. Okay, I, I know, Hala, you want, you want to come back, but, but first I, I want to get a, a word from, from Cameron Bokhari. Uh, uh, Cameron, uh, I wonder uh, to what extent uh, a fear of upsetting Iran uh, has, has factored into, into Turkey's uh, response to the Syrian uprising. It, it, that's very much the case. I mean, Iran uh, shares a border with Turkey. Uh, Turkey also has a, a, a couple of other borders with Iran. One is in Iraq, given the disproportionate amount of influence that Iran enjoys in post-Baathist Iraq. And Iran being the supporter of the current regime in Syria also means that there is an Iranian presence, a geopolitical footprint in Syria. And Iran is a rising power. Turkey is, is a rising power. The Turkish government at this point in time does not want to engage in a confrontation with Iran. So it has to handle this matter very delicately. And therefore, it has to take into consideration the fact that it is coming from the outside, whereas Iranian military advisors and intelligence officials have long been present in Syria. And therefore, it doesn't want to widen the scope of this conflict, as my Turkish colleague was saying. And the other thing I'd like to respond to, to, to a point that Hala made earlier, which is that uh, you know, the, she's asking and saying, well, why can't the Syrian people uh, you know, carry on their revolution on their own? Well, what we're seeing right now, that that is not possible. The capabilities of the Syrian opposition uh, are not at that level where they can mount a serious campaign against the government, hence the killing of so many people. They need that external help. And I don't think that the Syrian opposition it, it speaks with one voice. Nobody can speak on behalf of the Syrian opposition. I mean, just look at the Syrian National Council. It saw defections from within its ranks not too right. long ago. This was a matter of a few days ago. Okay. And the government troops have retaken towns from the rebels. So they need outside help. Okay, all right. I, 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 Hala, I can see you shaking your head uh, vigorously there. I mean, respond, please. But also, before you do, bearing in mind we've got a very brief amount of time uh, left, two minutes in, in fact. Tell me where in the space spectrum of, of, of the Syrian opposition, your group, the, uh, the ODFS, sits? Uh, it, it's actually a moderate opposition group uh, which we promote for democracy and freedom in Syria. And we are trying to help to unify, actually, the voices of the oppositions. Because the main problem we have here in Syria is that the, op the Syrian opposition themselves, they don't have a shared voice, a shared ground of a change. And that's why I think that the, 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 the problem now with the Syrian revolution, it's, it fails to achieve its target because there is no substantial alternative to Assad regime. Many people in Syria, and I'm speaking here from perspective of a Syrian, a Syrian person, a Syrian citizen who lived in Syria for a few years of my life, people are still scared of what is the future will bring to Syria. And that's why maybe the, the Syrian revolution until now, it has not succeeded because people can't see beyond the horizon who, what is going to happen next. And maybe also because of the complexity of the texture of the, of, of the Syrian society with all these sects, with the Alawites, uh, Shia and Dorzi and uh, Kurds and Sunni. And that's why I think what people, the Syrian people need is the assurance that the future Syria is the Syria for all Syria. It's not for the Alawite, okay. it's not for the Sunni, it's for every single Syrian uh, 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 with regards to, 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 uh, okay. to religious uh, sect, regards to ethnicity, regards to race. All right, there, I'm afraid, uh, we must leave it.
So thank you to all our guests, Haldan Solmasturk in Ankara, Cameron Bakari in Toronto, and Halad Diab in Leicester in the UK. And thank you very much indeed for watching. If you want to catch the show again online, just go to our website at aljazeera.com. From me, Adrian Finnegan, I'll see you again. Bye for now.